Hi everyone, in this video we'll be discussing one of the individual gas laws, Boyle's law. Here is our syllabus dot point. First, let's discuss the topic of what are gas laws. Gas laws are a set of laws which describe the behaviour of gases under various conditions. What's important to understand about these gas laws is that for them to be applicable, assumptions must be made regarding the ideal properties of gases. Some of these assumptions include that gases have low density, are free-flowing or forming, meaning that they take on the shape of their containers and leak through gaps, they are compressible and expandable, and also they are diffusive. Robert Boyle was a 17th century chemist who pioneered the modern scientific method. This meant that he advocated for some of the key principles of scientific method which we use today, such as controls and experiments, and also assessing the scientific rigour of an experiment, such as validity, reliability, and accuracy. He was also among the first to define elements, compounds, and mixtures. But most importantly, with regard to our current topic, he developed what's known as Boyle's Law, which is one of the gas laws. Boyle's Law, being one of the individual gas laws, can be derived from the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law is PV equals to NRT, where P is pressure, V is volume, N is amount, R is the universal gas constant, and T is temperature. In the equation, if we hold NRT constant, we can observe mathematically that an increase in P will lead to a decrease in V, and vice versa. Thus, Boyle's law also describes how the pressure of a gas is inversely proportional to its volume, under the condition that amount and temperature remains unchanged. Pressure we define as the force that's exerted on each gas molecule, while volume is defined to be the space which a gas occupies in the context of Boyle's law. Common units which are used for pressure include pascals, which is Pa, kilopascals, which is thousands of pascals, an atmosphere is equivalent to 101,325 pascals, or 101.325 kilopascals. This conversion value for an atmosphere into a pascal needs to be remembered. Volume is measured in milliliters, or in liters, which is equal to 1,000 milliliters. If the mathematical relationship PV equals to K is true according to Boyle's law, we can also derive the relationship P1V1 equals to P2V2. This relationship can be translated to that a change in pressure or volume of a system will cause the initial pressure, P1, and initial volume, V1, to equal to the product of the final pressure, P2, and the final volume, V2. It's important to note that Boyle's law, however, only applies when temperature and amount is held constant. And we talked about this previously when we looked at the ideal gas formula, which is PV equals to NRT. The inversely proportional relationship between volume and pressure in Boyle's law is demonstrated by this graph. We can see that as the volume increases, the gas pressure decreases. And inversely, when the gas pressure increases, the volume becomes exponentially smaller and decreases. Here we can use an animation to help us better visualize Boyle's law. Consider first a container of fixed volume which contains gas particles. Within the container, the molecules are moving randomly. The volume V is fixed, and the pressure P is given by the force exerted on each of the gas molecules. If we take that same container, but now we make it smaller, the volume has now decreased, V2. And if we look at the motion of the molecules, we can see that there are more potential points of contact between the gas particles and thus more force exerted onto each particle, P2. Thus, P2 increases proportionally to V2's decrease. Boyle's law is applicable in a variety of real-world scenarios. Breathing and lung function is an example of such. When we are breathing, the diaphragm moves up and down to increase or decrease the pressure in our lungs. Let's first consider inhalation. In order to breathe in, the lungs must expand. The volume increases and the pressure decreases. At this point, the external pressure is greater than the internal pressure of the lungs. And because of this, air which is in an area of greater pressure is then able to travel into the lungs where there is lower pressure. Let's consider exhalation. When we exhale, the volume of the lung decreases. According to Boyle's law, contrary to inhalation, now the internal pressure is higher than the external pressure, and so air is able to travel outwards from the lungs to decrease the internal pressure. Another example of Boyle's law is a syringe. Pushing the plunger of the syringe, assuming that it is sealed, will decrease volume and increase pressure, much like a bike pump. 
Initially, the molecules of gas are moving randomly, like such. Once the plunger is pushed, however, the amount of space which is available to each of the molecules is now severely diminished. The vibration of the gas leads to many more collisions, and thus the pressure increase as we can observe in the animation. Our final example of applications of Boyle's law in real life is a balloon. In the balloon, the gas molecules are initially vibrating, like such. When we squeeze the balloon, the volume decreases inside of the balloon, and so the pressure increases. The balloon has shrunk to indicate a decrease in volume. Internally, the particles are colliding with a greater frequency and force, and thus the pressure has also increased. As we previously discussed, limitations of Boyle's law include the ideal gas assumptions mentioned earlier, such as the fact that it is free-flowing and forming in nature. The ideal gas assumptions also include kinetic factors such as the idea that collisions between gases are elastic, meaning that there are no loss of kinetic energy, and that molecules constantly move in random directions with distribution of kinetic energy and speeds, and that the only forces present are those occurring during the collisions between molecules within the walls. Another limitation of Boyle's law is that Boyle's law only applies for an ideal gas at constant temperature and where there is a constant amount. Let's consider the following questions. A 25 milliliter syringe containing oxygen has a pressure of one atmosphere. If the volume of the syringe is now decreased to 15 milliliters, calculate the new pressure inside the syringe. We can use the relationship P1 V1 equals to P2 V2 in order for us to determine what the new pressure is going to be in the syringe. P1 is 1 and V1 is 25. This is equal to P2 multiplied by V2, which is 15. So mathematically, if we rearrange this, P2 must equal to 25 divided by 15, which is equal to 1.7 atmospheres. And this is in two significant figures, as that is the least amount that's given in the question. The next question asks, a certain bike pump can hold a total pressure of 1500 kilopascals before it breaks. The pump has also been designed to hold a maximum of 3 litres of air at one atmosphere and be able to decrease its volume down to 0.2 litres. Is this bike pump design flawed? Use calculations to explain your answer. So when the bike pump decreases in volume from 3 litres to 0.2 litres, the pressure will have inversely increased. We can use the relationship P1V1 equals to P2V2 again to calculate the new pressure. The initial volume is 3, and the initial pressure is 1 atmosphere. The new volume is 0.2 litres, so we need to work out what the new pressure is going to be. P2 must equal to 3 divided by 0.2 atmospheres, which equals to 15 atmosphere. To convert this into kilopascals, we need to multiply it by 101.325. So 1 atm equals to 101.325 kPa, and so 15 atm equals to 1519 kilopascals. So since 1519 is greater than 1500, the design is flawed and the pump will break. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.